Welcome to Think Alive. We're Sharon and Andy, just two people with a dream and a vision of restoring our traditional stone-built farmhouse in southern Spain, transforming it into a beautiful off-grid home and sharing our journey with you. Good morning, folks. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back. Um, yeah, you've seen the intro, hopefully. You've, you've sat through the intro. We are mad. You know who we are and what we're up to. Um, currently we should working... put, actually put in the intro that I like, <laughs> don't do this, don't do this at home. Don't be absolutely <laughs> mental. It's, um, it's got a yeah. lifetime's work ahead. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, Loads of stuff to be getting on with. We're currently working in the old corral, as you know. It's too hot to be outside. Us. It's too hot to be outside. We've still got the courtyard on the go. We've not given up on it, but it's too hot at the moment, as Andy says. Yeah, we're building um, solid wooden cabinets to fit the bespoke wooden cabinets because the room's like a big rhomboid. Is that the shape for it? You can't buy anything, and you wouldn't want to anyway to fit in it. No. So we're currently working on getting the sink unit done at the moment, and. And we've got our beautiful reclaimed sink um, that needs a bit of TLC. Cleaned it up last week. It's got a little chink in it, so we're going to look at someone, um, someone a new with, product. Someone hits it with an angle grind. <laughs> a so, new product somehow. to get that repaired. So we'll let you know how that goes as well. So we're back in position again <laughs> in the workshop. It's actually starting to work. This now it's getting a sheen on it in places. So we'll keep going. Someone suggested in the comments actually, thank you very much. We quite often overlook the obvious. Apply it with a brush and then wipe it off with the rag. Um, saves on products. Why don't we think of that? <laughs> what would we do without you lot? Right, so this is coat number seven I think. Um, also this one's gonna make it a bit more shiny. So we'll get it on and uh, come back to you shortly. Well, that's worked really, really well. Thank you so much. Um, we haven't got a rag soaked in linseed oil. It's wasted tons of it. We've got a lovely, a lovely covering on here. Um, that is happy days. Right, what's next? Right, okay, so we're going to see if we can prepare the sink while we're waiting for the never-ending drying to dry. Uh, I've got this stuff. Um, it's a um, two-part epoxy resin. Looks like it's white. We don't expect to get a perfect repair out of it, but if we can get it anything better than it is, it'll be fine. Let's see what we've got. Um, no idea. Apparently it's like two bits. You just thought them up, take the bit off your own and mix them together. I've got me my rubber gloves ready. We can get into the packaging. Scored bane of our lives. <laughs> Okay, never used this before. I used similar things, but nothing like. So there it is. Is that reflecting? Or can you see it? Just two sticks, and we just want to nick off, judge what we need, and um, mix them together. It's not quite white, um, but it shouldn't matter. We can always paint it after anyway. So. Let's get on with it. So this is the little nick in question. It's, to be honest, I'm not worried about it at all. As I said last week, it's an old sink. It's going into an old house, so we don't really care. But if we can make it look a little bit better, then that'll be great. So we'll see what happens. Right, so rubber gloves applied. They don't actually fit that well. I've got two equal sized lumps. And um, apparently we just amalgamate them together, is that the right word? Keep squeezing and pressing, work it in. I'll carry on, it could take a while this. I'm not sure. Let's keep folding it, it's almost like folding flour. Um, I've mixed far too much, of course. But I've only got that little nick. Right, let's have a go then. Let's assume that's mixed enough. Let's see if we can get it in. Is 
don't even know what to do with it. Right, so it's in. It's not bad. We've discovered a wet, a wet finger smooths it off all right. Um, it looks as though we're going to have to get some enamel paint just to go over it um, to finish it off completely. Um, but it's better than an angle grinder, Nick. So I'm back in the workshop. Um, I don't know if you can see that. I'm trying to see, it looks like you can, but it's going shiny. It's not actually wet that now, it's dry. And the majority of it has the sheen on it that, um, that I want. Um, so I'm just going to give it one more coat, which I think will be coat number eight. Um, which will hopefully do it because we're eager to get it fitted <laughs> but obviously don't want to rush this because we want it to be perfect um, so yeah let's get another coat on it the uh, brush and cloth technique is highly recommended and works incredibly well so we're going to stick with that may even use it on other things as well because it does give a really nice finish Fantastic. Right, I'll get this done. So while we're playing the waiting game on the ever drying linseed oil, um, I said, mentioned in another video I was going to put a ball valve on this. This pipe um, comes all the way down the land, a couple of hundred metres um, from our water deposit up the top um, to fill up our purification tank which is under here. Um, we have to open the valve at the top and then let it fill up it takes a while sometimes we forget and um, if we put too much in we could actually empty potentially a full 20,000 litres into this which only holds about five and um, that would be catastrophic um, and I have forgotten on a couple of occasions and slightly overfilled it um, so I'm going to put this bowl valve which I need to assemble on a pipe this pipe I'm going to put an angle through into the tank and then set this at a level um, so when it's full, it clicks off and stops it. We will still turn it off there, of course, to save any possible incidences. But in the short term, if we do forget to check it, it shall stop. Um, this pipe is quite curly, black, same stuff as everywhere. I'm going to run that down inside a piece of solid pipe and then put this on the bottom of it. And then I'll be able to adjust the height of Bob's your uncle, in theory. So I'm going to use this on the outside and I'm going to use this piece to run down the middle of it. Um, just because you can see it's curly. And if it's got a ball valve on the end it's going to stick up so at least I'll keep it straight. That'll just stick out the bottom a bit and out the top of it for my valve. I've made up my angle that's going to go on the end because that's going to have to go on horizontal like that so it floats up closes it off that way even so when it's when it's low it's down there and the ball will float up shut the valve put off the water that's the theory anyway um, what I need to do obviously what I'm going to set it to about 2800 litres is about there and um, this tank also leaks a bit it's another job on the list to seal it up but we can get up to 3000 litres in it without any problem at all so if I set it at 2800 we're within the limit and um, yeah we can we only put 2,000 litres of time in it anyway so we've got a good buffer there um, so I need I'm just going to run in now once it's filled up I'll be able to gauge my level exactly so I can cut this through uh, in the meantime I'm going to cut a hole for it um, and get it somewhere near so my pipe's 50 mil so I'm going to cut a 50 mil hole through this making sure there's no beams underneath. You can go right next to him there. Well, that's an absolute perfect fit in there. Lovely. So, all I need to do now is wait till my level's up and then I can get this one cut off um, to the right length. Then top with the piece inside it with the valve on the end but until that levels up I can't do anything because I want it to be exactly where I want it to be. I should be able to get this out. It went in. You can stay there for a minute. 
Right, okay, so I've assembled my ball valve. Um, I need to allow, I need to work out where the water line lies on this. That actually cuts it off there. I suspect about halfway. And then I'll allow for the distance below the bottom of my pipe to there to get my level because a couple of inches in here is like a th no, two or three, several hundred litres. Um, so we're just still waiting for it to fill up. In the meantime, we're ready to go. Of course, I don't have to wait for it to fill up. I've got 1,800 litres in there now. Maybe the fraction over. Um, I can actually just measure this distance and add, add it to this. What I've done, I've dropped this right down to the bottom. So where it's wet, is 1,800 litres. I need to add another, that above the wet, and that'll be me mark. Then I need to allow 150 millimetres for the, the depth. The ball valve will be below that. Take that off. <laughs> um, I've just measured it, that's how I know. So let's have a look, get it out. Uh, it's never easy. I've still got to, got to get the pipe in here, yeah. Oh. Right, so can we see my wet mark? There it is. Stay there. I'm just going to mark that with a pen before it dries. So that's marked. So that's 1,000, probably 900 litres actually. So if I had that same distance to it, 19 centimetres that'll give me exactly 2,800 litres that's there so that's going to be my bottom now I need to allow another 150 millimetres for my ball valve and the sticky out bit there oh keep still it's rolling about trouble with round things Right, so that's where I want to cut it. I'm going to double check that and then get it cut. I know. So I push my pipe through it. I'm going to fix my ball valve on the bottom. It says. And all the buildings on. Air on there and the o-ring on the top. And now you can go on there. Tighten it down. So now I've got to lower it into the tank and then push it up through this hole and um, try not to drop it. <laughs> I'll just flip it over there, watch that noise. There we go. So he's in there. Not be thin one through. Stay there. Lovely. Right, I need him really need him not to move now. Um, put an end on him. Yeah. You know when you need an assistant. Right, I'm going to put a jubilee clip around this just to stop it sliding back in. Shut this so I don't fall in. Okay. Right, so what I've got, 
that's my pipe in my ball valve on the bottom obviously I've got some scope for adjustment on that little bit up and down this is the pipe that comes from the tank I need to cut this one off here cut this one off there put an elbow in it which I've got somewhere join them back together and then we can see if it works well we've got water coming in um, you probably can't hear it because of the noise of the inverter up there um, let's see if it stops when it gets to the desired level if it gets to the desired level and um, we might have to adjust it a little bit but in the meantime I think we can relax a little bit when we're running the water now and not risk flooding the whole place out well it's fiesta weekend in the village um, started last night we didn't go it was cake and wine in the square followed by um, a quartet at 11 o'clock when we were in bed by then but uh, tonight is the floral parade so I'm not sure how many floats there'll be there's only 104 people in the village so not a big place is it, it could be quite a small affair but we'll go and have a look anyway and we'll let you know we'll bring you some footage hopefully we will yeah so yeah uh, what time does that start actually uh, 7 30 Oh, 7.30 the, the float, yeah. the parade. Yeah. On oh, the vermouth session at 1.30, we've missed that already. We've missed that, yeah. 7.30 the parade, 11 p.m. popular Ravenna, some entertainment. Some entertainment. 3 a.m. chocolate with Tonya. Um, Tonya is a kind of bread type that you, you dip in the chocolate, so like a chocolate fountain. I'm guessing it's going thing. to be a fondue, yes. 3, 3 a.m. I doubt we'll that's make that one. <laughs> So, so we might not be able to show you any so of that. let's go and see
Right, so the fiestas last night were fantastic. Went on till, well the last event was at 3 o'clock this morning, so God knows what time it went on till we bailed about 10. Um, and now, this morning, we've got, well this afternoon, we've got giant paella in the square, which we're going to go. But I've just nipped over to Chris and Lily's, you probably recognise it, to pick up the Think Alive Super Computer. So thank you so much, Chris, yep, for putting no it worries. together for me. No we even got a free lollipop, which apparently is for Sharon. But I don't know if it'll make it back to ours or not, but, so I'll put it in the box. <laughs> so, let's get back and do paella. No, that's what you call a paella. <laughs> Absolutely ginormous. Loads of people here. Kids swimming pool over there. Everyone's getting merry. Hi Sharon. <laughs> wow, look at that. Looking forward to that. Well, that was an experience. Absolutely full to bursting of paella. I've never seen a paella so huge in my life. It was very nice. Um, yeah, it was packed as well. It yeah, packed. it was great actually. Great atmosphere. Really enjoyed it. I'm glad we went. Yeah. Um, Saturday night, the floats were <laughs> funny. Right, so, funny. So, so funny. Mm. One one of them was actually a shopping trolley. <laughs> yeah, there was, well, you, you've seen the video. You've but seen yeah, the was, video. Was, yeah. What a great turnout. Everyone all handing out drinks to everyone, the, handing out sweets to all the kids and everything. Um, it did apparently go on till four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Um, we it. heard. <laughs> <laughs> There's a few. A few um, Thick people this morning, so yes, um, yes, people with big heads. <laughs> so, anyway, back to reality. Tomorrow morning, we'll be cracking on. All right, so back to reality. Um, the oil, the last coat I put on this is um, still drying, it's still a bit tacky. Don't know how long it's going to take, but on that basis, I think I ought to actually start making the top for this um, because it's, it took a week to get the other one oiled and perhaps another week for it to um, to cure properly. So I'm going to look at getting this, this top on here done. I can't say get this unit finished then, but obviously I'm going to be probably two weeks behind behind this one with this one. Um, so let's go and see what we've got, get some wood cut. So I've moved the other one off the bench, stood him up here where it can dry nicely forever. <laughs> um, so I've got a clean bench. Um, it's actually looking very nice. I don't know if you can see the, the glossiness on it in the reflection. Hard to tell. But yeah, I'm very, very happy with it. Just wanted to dry. I was so keen to get this in. And it's just taking forever. Right, so we're back in the workshop. These are my two boards I'm going to use for my work tops. Um, I need to use two, unfortunately. Uh, but I'm just going to cut them both together. One will be full width and then the other one I'll rip down to get the width that I need. First job though, cut the length. So this is my other piece. I should be able to cut this with the um, table saw. It's just about wide enough. Um, if you remember, I said with the, if you're using a circular saw, you always cut with the underside upwards, so you get your rip edge underneath out of sight. If you're using a table saw, you do it the other way because the blade cuts down. So you want your nice finished face on the top. Let's see if we can get it cut. Not easy with a big board like this. That's with a bit of wind. <laughs> So now I'm going to glue them together. 
how people suggested before about biscuits or dowels to hold them to give them a bit of strength. <coughs> I've not got that capacity, uh, so I'm just going to glue them and clamp them like I did with the other one. It's going to be sitting on the board that's already there, so it doesn't need any strength, but it's just it's got a big flat solid surface underneath it anyway. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to pull them apart, put a line of glue down there, um, ratchet straps, and then crank them up tight together. Oh, that's the plan anyway. So, we'll move them out of the way. Just adjusted the straps so they're going to work right first time. Because once the glue's on, you don't have a lot of time. And, um, get me glue on. There we go, super ratcheted together, super tension. All I've got to do now is wipe off and um, any glue that's come out of the top here. Put one on there. Because it doesn't sand very well, and obviously I'm going to have to sand down the joint to make it all nice and flush. So I'll get a damp cloth. Alrighty, looking pretty good. I've got a tiny bit of a ridge, but that'll sand out easily. And um, as I said before, these are all in strips of solid pine, all glued together at the factory anyway. So hopefully, well, we glued that last one and that's absolutely solid. So there's no reason why this shouldn't be. Um, so fantastic. So we'll let that dry overnight now until the morning and come and see what we've got. Well, it's that time of the year again, harvest time my favourite time of the year. I've had an eventful morning, the two Emilios, Emilio and his 94 year old father have been harvesting the almonds at the back of us. Um, so I've been sitting with the boys who have been extremely good but they do think that all of that land is theirs as well and they get very territorial and start barking and things. But they've been good boys this morning. Um, so I haven't got a lot of work done but I've been rewarded with, look at those beautiful plums. Plums and some lovely sweet seedless eating grapes. Um, yeah, fantastic. Um, they're a little bit hard yet, some of them, but uh, can't wait to try them so I can feel a plum crumble coming up shortly. Well, there we go, after drying overnight, I've taken the straps off it, taken the clamps off it, and now if you can see, we've just got one lovely, almost seamless piece. I've got a little ridge there that should sand out quite easily. So now um, I need to get the whole thing sanded down and um, prepared for our marathon oiling session which we know we've got ahead of us. Um, so yep, get the sand out, let's get on with it. Well I'm getting there, um, that's pretty undetectable now, I lift it up, you can see, but well, hopefully you can't see where it is, um, fantastic, looks like it's going to take me most of the day to do this, these things always take longer than you think, I've just got a couple of splits around the knots and I've just put a little bit of wood filler in them, so I need to let that go off as well and then we can keep on, keep on sanding, um, so yeah, I'll carry on. Well, Emilio and Emilio have gone. Um, there's loads just left on the ground. What they basically do is put nets down and then they've got a big stick and they beat the tree and they all fall off onto the nets. They gather them up into buckets and take them off to be weighed in. Um, but some escape the net, which uh, my job this afternoon is to go around and collect them. The dogs love them as treats. I absolutely love them. Um, and also some of the trees, depending on how ripe the almonds were, um, they don't all fall off when they bash them. So Emilio said I'm free to help myself to whatever's left on the trees. So happy days. Um, and that brings us to the end of another video, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. Look at our local fiesta. Um, thank you all so much for watching, to all our subscribers and supporters, um, we couldn't do without you, we say this every time but genuinely we mean that, so um, yeah and we will see you on Sunday.